Hi everyone, my name is Michael and these are my hands. That's the only part of me that you'll be seeing today because we're gonna learn how to build a crossbow like this, made out of pencils, a uh, cloth pen, half of a drinking straw and tons of rubber bands. And the way it works, you charge it manually into the cloth pen, put your ammo inside the barrel, which is the uh, straw, and release to shoot the ammo pretty far away. And I won't shoot in live because, you know, I don't want to ruin my monitor, but in general it shoots pretty far away. So, all we'll need uh, for uh, the construction is four pencils, uh, preferably unsharpened. Um, it's not that important, you just can't use the sharp sharpened part and, well, it's pointless. Uh, half of a drinking straw. I prefer uh, the wider ones, they're slightly harder, which is good for the structural stability. Um, one cloth pin that will act as our trigger. And a small wooden stick, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's just, you know, the ammo that we're gonna shoot out. Uh, you can use anything uh, suitable as <coughs> your arrow. And of course, tons of rubber bands. I use the size 24, but you can use any um, average sized ones. Okay, this is approximately the size. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's not too small. Okay, great. So, first of all, we are going to take two pencils and wrap one uh, rubber band around approximately a quarter of the length okay so it goes something like this we want the rubber band to hold the pencils together uh, try to make them you know equal length here uh, do it hard but not too hard because we'll be moving uh, that rubber band in a second a little closer to the uh, to the side and you'll see why okay that's good enough it doesn't have to be very strong take another one do the same on the other side approximately the same length from the edge you see I just wrap the rubber band around them nothing complicated yet good enough okay now the next part is that we create the structure basically the form of the crossbow okay it will be something like this and this part is already slightly more important because we really want this connection to be strong. The reason is that when we'll be, you know, um, pulling uh, the rubber back here, okay, when we try to charge the crossbow, we don't want the horizontal piece to move sideways, okay? So that would be very bad and pretty ugly in addition. Um, so we want this connection in the center to be as hard as you can make it. Okay, so let's do it. First of all, the first rubber has to go over the pencils that are still not connected, so that will it won't fall apart in the middle of connecting it to the second piece. Okay, so I used about half the rubber just to hold them together. Now I take the second plank and wrap it around. Now it's not, you know, accurate science, just do whatever you think will hold them together. Don't worry, we'll do a lot more <coughs> of this basically to hold it very strongly together. Okay, uh, try to keep it in the middle. Right now you see it's 
um, goes to the side because the rubber band is not symmetrical it's okay it doesn't matter because now we take the next one next rubber band and we're going to connect it and wrap it around the sides like this okay so if I want to straighten it for example into that side then I wrap it like this on the diagonal that will hold it together and finish up on the loose end okay see now it's already getting better let's use another one now it's symmetrical already just one and again we start on this side and wrap around this, the diagonal diagonal then we switch sides then we switch another diagonal and finish again on the short the short side now if you done it well it will be pretty tough already um, and we have our baseline okay this is the body of our crossbow great now the next step will be to connect the trigger okay to the edge of the crossbow once again we of course uh, will be using rubber bands but uh, here there's a trick we want to wrap the rubber band both on the bottom half of the trigger okay right because this part will be connected to the pencils uh, but in addition we also want to wrap it around the top around here uh, mostly to make uh, uh, the claw pin stick harder to the uh, pencils but also to help the claw pin to hold down um, the rubber bands um, when the crossbow is charged okay the claw pins um, own spring is not necessarily strong enough so we want to help it a little bit so let's do it and we're done so just uh, a couple of remarks about uh, how to connect the claw pin first notice that uh, half of it is not on the pencils okay uh, the reason is that we want to uh, leave room for about two fingers here so it will be comfortable to open up the trigger and hold it like this and also it's important uh, because we want to put a finger here uh, when we are charging the crossbow to provide a uh, contra uh, to the uh, strength of the pull of the uh, rubber bands uh, and I'll show that in a few minutes also notice that I uh, wrapped everything in rubber uh, again it's important that the trigger won't move to the sides uh, it should be pretty hard to open it uh, so it can hold the rubber uh, that will shoot our arrows uh, strongly enough okay great now, now the next step is to prepare the actual shooting mechanism okay the power that will shoot our arrows forward okay so what we do uh, is we take three rubber bands okay together and we're going to put a knot in them um, as accurately in the middle as you can okay so we just make a knot and when you strengthen it when you pull it down try to notice that it's in the middle okay that's pretty much accurate and now we do another one yeah, in exactly the same spot so that they go one on top of the other and the reason we're doing this because this knot will go inside the trigger and that's what allows the trigger to actually hold down the rubber when it's loaded when the crossbow is loaded also it's uh, better 
that a knot hits the arrow um, and not just you know three rubbers. Um, the reason I use three is just for added strength and power. Uh, you can use you know less if it's too much uh, or more if you want to shoot further. Um, there is a limit to that, uh, right? To that number. Uh, first, because it will become too big uh, for the whole mechanism, and second, because you won't be able to draw it uh, back into the uh, trigger. Um, so yeah. Now, a tricky bit. We need to connect the firing mechanism to the crossbow itself, right? So you want it to go somehow like this inside the sticks. So here we need to use actually quite a lot of power and we forcibly separate the pencils. Uh, if you did the first part well then it should be pretty hard. And what we do is we pull this inside, okay, try to make it again in the middle of this loop, of, uh, of the loop of each side. Force the guys to be separate and we're in. Okay, it, uh, it shouldn't be too far inside. Once we've connected it inside, we check that it's in the middle. If it's not, you can just pull it while it's inside. It's uh, easier and uh, sticking it in, in the be uh, to begin with. Okay, and now it's connected, it won't move, but just to be on the safe side, we will move the rubber that we put there in the beginning. We're gonna move it to the side, so it will hold down the rubber bands even harder. It's not really important in the sense that, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be all the way, just a little bit uh, small precaution so that uh, it won't fly away. Now we do the same on the other side. Okay, we take this part again, put it around in the uh, between the pencils, spread the pencils, and it goes inside. The second part is actually easier. Okay. Now notice. Ah, wait. Let's first fasten the side. Just move the rubbers up there. See, this is why it has to be strong enough to hold our firing parts, but not strong, not so strong that I can't move it. Again, doesn't really matter that it goes all the way. Just make it stick. Okay, so now we have the knot in the middle, it should be in the middle if we did it correctly, and we pull it back and we notice, and this is important, that the body is, you know, doesn't skew to one side or the other, okay, it stays pretty much in the middle, it doesn't have to be completely accurate again, uh, if we want some added structural stability, uh, for example, when I pull it back, I see that this side, this one, uh, pulls back a little bit harder. So I'm gonna just straighten that part with another rubber band that I didn't put in the beginning because I didn't know which side will be stronger. Again, rotate, rotate. Uh, it's better to do it in the beginning because the firing rubbers make it a little bit more complicated as you can see but it's still doable just takes a little bit more time and one last time don't forget to leave enough rubber to finish <coughs> on the short part of the body. Okay, great. So now you can also already charge it, put it in the 
tablecloth in the cloth pin, excuse me. And you see that it also already works when you release it. Okay? That's a good sign. So now we come to the final stage. We want to connect the barrel, the straw. Uh, we want to connect it to the front of the body, like this. Okay. Uh, the reason we need the barrel at all uh, is for stability when we shoot. Okay. The arrow will go inside, and when we shoot it forward, uh, we want it to go through the barrel to keep uh, the direction of the flight. Uh, if we didn't have a barrel and we just released uh, the arrow from here, it would fly randomly forward. Uh, not very, uh, let's say, not very accurate weapon. So what we do, um, we take the straw, put it here, uh, it should be approximately in the middle uh, of the connection. Uh, we don't want uh, it to be too close to the firing trigger uh, because we want to give the rubber band some room to fly, okay, to push forward the arrow here. Uh, maybe even a little bit further. <coughs> now we take a rubber band uh, you can connect it with uh, scotch tape also, but I don't like scotch tape. I prefer rubber bands. Um, rubber bands are reversible. You can always, you know, change stuff, uh, take it apart, build it again better. <coughs> with scotch you can't. Anyway, um, we take the rubber, double it up, and connect it from the inside to the straw then we go through the firing rubber and wrap it around the other side okay so that the firing rubber is free and the straw is connected but notice it's not connected very um, not very tight okay for two reasons first because we don't want the straw to be um, smashed, squashed by the rubber uh, because we want to give the arrow uh, a lot of room to fly through the uh, straw. If it will uh, be rubbing against the straw walls uh, then it's a problem, right, because it will take away a lot of the energy, a lot of the momentum um, and so the arrow won't fly uh, very far. The second reason is because uh, it, the straw has a tendency to move, okay, and that's okay because it gets hit by the firing rubber all the time, and there's really not much uh, we can do about it. Uh, so it will move a little bit forward, backward, and we just move it back uh, uh, between every shot. Not a big deal. Okay, great. So now that we have that, we are basically finished. Okay, pull back the firing rubber. Pull it back. And when you charge the bow, try to push the arrow a little bit inside but do it carefully so <laughs> you won't get hit just like I did right now <laughs> because it might um, shoot the arrow prematurely Okay. but basically that's it whenever we uh, press the trigger uh, we shoot and that's it, that's your crossbow uh, please be careful it uh, uh, might shoot uh, pretty, uh, you know, pretty powerfully. So don't, and I mean it, don't shoot at people. <laughs> okay, uh, it will hurt them. And that's it. I hope you liked it. And uh, you know, feel free to improvise and tell me how it went. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye.